Welcome to Team ASMR's Minimal Increment presentation for the Wheel of Jeopardy game. In this presentation, we will introduce the team, provide a project overview, discuss the minimal increment goals, give updates from the skeletal increment presentation, we will give a comprehensive demo of the working application, and we will follow the demo by talking about addressing risks and lessons learned, and finally we will touch on the project deliverables and project timeline. Let me begin by introducing our team. From left to right, we have Alec Wayne, our software quality analyst, Matthew Hayashi, our project manager, Rebecca Wilson, our test and programming lead, and Robert San, our lead configuration manager and architect. So the achievements from the minimal increment. First, updating system requirements and the project plan. Working through analysis and design processes, we developed a better understanding of the asks to complete this application. We added, corrected, and clarified requirements of the project. Having quite substantial results from the previous sprints helped narrow down the list of outstanding items. We also revised the project plan based off our progress. Some notable updates were more specific expectations of the front end and slight adjustments to the subsystem definitions. This was to better accommodate the graphic side of things. Moving on, with this minimal increment, we wanted to complete the backend implementation. After our skeletal increment largely verified our design, we went ahead and did the whole architecture in code. Some examples of things we did were fixing the logic at the end of round and end of game stages, implementing a reusable mechanic to reset the board and wheel for the new round, and fixed a bug that plagued player turn transitions. I think the most visible change with this uplift is how we integrated the GUI with the backend. Now, when a user interacts with the GUI, so like clicking a button or typing an answer, the backend will capture the input and process it. Afterwards, the backend updates the game state, making necessary calculations and doing straight state transitions. The components on screen were then changed to display the updated state. This task probably took the most effort and was the focus on this increment. These accomplishments are most representative of our move towards this minimal increment concept, where the game is actually functional from the user's perspective. Rather than having to play the game through a terminal and only getting text output indicating the state of the game, the user can use buttons and just look at graphical components. While the GUI isn't in the final position, the behavior more or less is. Since the skeletal increment, we've made great strides in connecting our back end to our front end. Here we have the graphical user interface and on the left hand side we have our wheel and on the right hand side we have the board. On the tops we have the categories and the potential questions here on the bottom. Over here we have the current player and we have the other players located at the top of the screen. Currently it is player one's turn. All players only have zero points because it's the beginning of the game. Since it's player 1's turn, player 1 is going to spin the wheel and continue the game. The question pop-up is coming from the Superman category. It's going to be the first question on the top, which will be for 100 points. What is Superman's real name? Superman's real name is Clark Kent. Let's get this answer correct and see how many points we get. It looks like that's correct. Let's click OK. Now player one has 100 points. Now it will be player two's turn. Player two will spin the wheel. The question category is going to be from Superman. Since 100 point question is already gone, we'll go to the next question, which will be for 200 points. 
What planet was Superman born on? Superman was born on Krypton. Let's get this wrong and see what happens. We'll choose Earth. Incorrect. When you choose the incorrect question, you get the opposite points. Since player two only had zero points and they answered the question wrong, they now have negative 200 points. Now it's player three's turn. Let's spin the wheel and see what happens. We got the player's choice. That means it is going to be player three's choice. Player three can choose any of the potential categories we have up here. Player three wants to choose the Spider-Man category. This will be for the first 100 point question. Player three will now answer what is Spider-Man's real name? Spider-Man's real name is Peter Parker. Let's get this right and see what happens. Correct. Player three now has 100 points. Now it's player one's turn again. Player one will spin the wheel. It looks like we got Spider-Man. Fast forwarding through some of the game, we'll show you what happens when you get to the second round where the points double and the questions change. Here, we see the end of round. When the end of round occurs, all of the points will be doubled. After that, we will change the categories as well. Now we're on to round two, and it's player one's turn. Let's spin the wheel. How many holes in a typical golf game? Let's choose C. It looks like that was incorrect. Here we have the points that went entered. As player two spins the wheel, the wheel slice is Lou's turn and it looks like player two lost their turn. Now it's player three's turn. Let's spin the wheel. It looks like player three got a free spin token, so they're going to spin the wheel again. We can see as we close that it's still player three's turn because player three still needs to spin the wheel for a second time. And it looks like the option chosen is player's choice. Player three gets to choose what category they want to answer from. Let's choose soccer. How long is a soccer game? Let's choose A. It looks like that was incorrect. Now player three can choose a spin token. The spin token will give them a second choice and an option to spin the wheel again. They're spinning the wheel again. It looks like the wheel slice was spin again, so now they're going to spin again. It looks like they got the section golf. What is the diameter of a golf ball? Let's guess A. That was incorrect. Now player three lost their points. Let's spin the wheel again. For player one's turn, they chose the soccer category. How many kicks in a penalty shootout? Let's choose B. That was incorrect. Player one's points are now negative 800. 
Now it's player two's turn. Let's spin the wheel. How many games in a set of tennis? We only have three options here, and if we choose another option that is not located on there, it will incorrectly register and you'll have to answer again. Let's try B, which isn't an option. We get a notification to enter A, B, or C, and it correctly handled the error checking. How many games in a set of tennis? Let's choose A. That was incorrect. At this point, we have all the sections completed that we normally would have for the second round. Since we're done and we hit spin wheel, we receive an option that tells us that it's the end of game. Since player two and player three have the highest amount of points between all players, since player one has negative 200 points, players two and players three are the winners with a tie of zero points. At this point, no player can select anything to change the game since the game is already done. If we hit spin wheel again, we still receive the same pop-up. And that is the end of our game. Addressing risks and lessons learned. For the addressing risk portion, we used the native tkinter interactive components. Tkinter is a Python graphical user interface toolkit. The purpose of using Tkinter was to reduce the number of potential bugs that would come from custom development of components. Our team had experience with backend development, but we had little front-end experience. Using Tkinter mitigated that risk. Two, a carefully designed interface allowed efficient parallel development. We wanted to design the interface with a backend in mind. This way, it would require minimal changes to connect the front end to the back end, even when the back end was still under development. And three, we prioritized verifying the functionality over the GUI updates. We wanted to have a solid foundation on the back end before updating the GUI. More development and testing was done on the back end to ensure it was ready for the GUI updates. And on to the lessons learned portion. Design should be communicated over increments. Designing software is a process. Any design changes or edits to the design should be communicated throughout the entire process, as opposed to all at once when it is completed. Reconsidering requirements should happen sooner. To ensure there is enough time to implement and test all requirements, if the requirements do change or the requirements are misunderstood, it is best to identify as early as possible. These are the next steps our team is working on to deliver a successful quality software product. Continue development on the graphical user interface. For the target increment, we want to have the GUI tested and completed in full. Increase testing efforts to ensure quality. This would include edge case testing, regression testing, and integration testing of the GUI. The purpose of edge case testing is to ensure reliability and quality of the software. The purpose of regression testing is to ensure all requirements are met and adding in the remaining features to the GUI does not interfere with the previously implemented features. In integration testing, the purpose of integration testing is to ensure the back end and front end communicate seamlessly. And finally, to the last point, map testing to requirements to ensure all requirements have been met. Uh, when performing all testing, we will have the requirements in mind to ensure full coverage. And this is an outline for our team's deliverables up to date. The scheduled increment was completed in the previous increment. For the minimal increment, the goal was to connect the front end to the back end and to finish the game logic. As mentioned previously, we want to ensure all edge cases have been exercised for the target increment. Uh, so this will be done in the target increment, as well as finishing up the GUI. Uh, this would need to in uh, increase testing measures and more development uh, for the GUI integration. 
and then if time permits, the dream increment would include an interactive game wheel and more graphics to make the game more user-friendly and visually appealing. This is the team's deliverables timeline. We are on track to complete the minimal increment by the due date. Once the minimal is finished, the team will continue development to complete the target deliverable on time. This concludes Team ASMR's minimal presentation, and thank you for listening.